Hi everyone and welcome to Asami Rat Care. Um, so today's video is going to be about post-surgery aftercare and it's one that we've got a particular um, semi-unwilling volunteer here to help me with which is poor thing. Um, quickly reveal Fing there. Um, Fing had a um, lumpectomy today so not particularly a major one she had um, a mammary tumour the size of a grape in her kind of leg pit for want of a better word to describe it um so she had that removed today all went very smoothly um if you're interested in the kind of pre-op stuff then there's a video on in the health section that covers the kind of pre-op um she's also now wrapped now um i should say not every rat bless you not every rat needs wrapping um but i would say every rat in our family <laughs> generally needs wrapping um because they're little assholes and do quite like chewing the stitches um, so we'll, we'll kind of wrap her up there. Right, so post-surgery, what are the things you have to think about? Now, it's important to know that every rat will react differently to surgery, and some of that will depend on what um, anaesthetics are used, what um, kind of surgery pain management is used, um, and some of it will be down to the individual rats. So, for instance, um, I picked up Fing today, and one of my friends picked up one of their rats, um, and um, their girl... Um, was quite stoned when they got them, very much out of it, um, probably not hugely thrilled by the rap. Um, whereas Fing, when I picked her up, was bright and kind of like desperate to get out of her rap. In fact, she got out of it twice at the vets. The vets now know our rats quite well and also wrapped them straight away. Um, but yes, um, so she had to come home and be wrapped a third time. Um, so poor thing is a little bit miserable, bless her. So um, that's one thing to do. One thing to look out for is look out for the rat if they're kind of very cold, um, limp, lethargic. That is generally a sign that they're very much struggling. Um, that's particularly common where ketamine, which is an injectable anaesthetic, has been used. Um, so bear that one in mind. Um, but yeah, just keep an eye if they're like that. Um, there's very little you can do with something like ketamine. Once it's in the system, it needs to work its way out. But making sure to keep the rat warm, give them a friend. So. Um, thing normally has Mog in there. I've moved her out for purposes of the video because Mog would have escaped and run around somewhere by now um, and I don't want to kind of like cause too much stress on there. Um, so what you want to kind of consider as well as kind of when you get them home is before you add a friend you want to think about how well they're doing. So I wouldn't want to put um, a, a kind of rat I didn't really trust in with a rat that was kind of completely out of it and kind of semi kind of conscious you want to make sure they're around but to be fair most vets won't send them home until the rat has at least eaten something um i'll bite reluctantly potentially <laughs> um so fink has eaten various bits and pieces in fact um, a good test is the malt paste test um, she will do a lot for malt paste let me see you want some malt paste oh yes yeah she can look like she's absolutely dying and then i offer her some malt, malt paste and suddenly <laughs> she's kind of awake again I'm quite happy. She is a bit unha unhappy at the moment though, she's not enjoying being wrapped. Um, yeah, so next thing is you want to put them in some sort of hospital cage. This is to restrict the movements, which is quite important when they've had surgery, they've got a wound, you want that wound to heal as best as possible. So something reasonably small, this is like one of my mini cages I use, you can use like a cat carrier as an alternative. I wouldn't want too much smaller than this, um, just because when a rat is wrapped they need to be able to manoeuvre around and something too narrow they can't do that and then they struggle with. Um, but that's what to think about. The floor covering um, matters differing amounts depending on um, what surgery your rats have. So for a castration or a simple lumpectomy like this one, um, I tend to just use whatever substrate that I've got around. So this is just bed max and a bit of safe bed for kind of extra comfort. Um, if you're going for something that's kind of much more abdominal cavity where infection is a much higher risk, like a spay, um, I would make sure that you're using vet bed or fleece down as a layer there and that's just because it's less likely to get stuff into and onto the wound um, but I don't mind so much for them pecked to me I just do whatever I think they'll be most comfortable with and that's quite important you want them to be relaxed and comfortable um, next thing to think about shelter so when they're wrapped you want some sort of shelter that they can turn around and get into because they're very unmaneuverable and that's the point of the wrap and I will say if you're not sure about the wrapping check out the other video. I'd go through it again, but I don't really want to put Fing through any more wrapping. She already hates me a little bit at the moment. Um, so do bear that in mind with the house. So at first you can never really get as an enclosed house as you'd like, but one way around that is what I'm going to do once the video is finished. I'm just going to put a towel over half of this and that'll make help keep the warmth in. Um, it is reasonably cool at the moment. 
um, and it'll also help Thing feel more sheltered as well as having her little kind of house there. And obviously a friend will also help her keep warm and feel safe. Um, the next kind of really important thing is food. So you want your kind of unwell rat to be able to eat and to drink actually. Um, make sure that if you've wrapped your rat that the water bottle is very low and um, that's more important than food actually and make sure that they are drinking adding a vitamin supplement like dots of squiggles or a bit of apple juice or similar um, can help encourage them to to drink if they're struggling you can also try if they're really not with it um, just getting your hand your finger in a little bit of sugary solution or even milk milk works quite well and can, can convince rats to do it so soya milk almond milk oat milk um, even real milk for the majority of rats, to be honest, they're not that bothered. They're not lact or lactose intolerant, like some people claim. But yes, that kind of thing can encourage them to start drinking. Um, as long as they're drinking, you're pretty much okay. Food-wise, I tend to offer dry mix, but bear in mind that they're really small pieces. They may struggle to eat, particularly when wrapped like this. Um, you can also offer wet food. Um, one thing to be really careful with with wet food is some of the kind of painkillers and actually some reactions to anaesthetic can make the rat eat uncontrollably to the point where they get so full that it gives them constipation which is exactly what you don't want particularly if you've had kind of like a castration or something around that area lump removal around that area um, so you have to bear that way in mind um, and kind of be, be reasonable so give them a small amount I would say like um, a teaspoon a heap teaspoonful of wet food or something like that twice a day just as well as some dry mix that they can have just to encourage them to eat and actually after that first day or two they won't need it they should be going back to kind of normal um, the other important thing and it's actually really important is to give them time so it's really tempting when you've got um, a poorly rat that's recovering from surgery to want to constantly have it on you to be kind of looking after it to be caring for it to make it feel safe but actually one of the number one things you can do is give them time and give them time in a kind of safe secluded space where they don't have to think about you <laughs> as much as anything it sounds awful um so i will generally i will check on thing um two or three times a day make sure she's okay um make sure she's eating over the next day or two but i won't be spending a long time with her out of the cage if she was really really sick then it'd be a different matter um, i might have to nurse her a bit in that but for the majority of cases, if your rat's doing well and is fine, leave them in the cage and leave them with their friend and make sure you pick a nice, calm, kind of reassuring friend for that. And if that friend then gets bored, rotate them in. That works quite well too. Um, so that's kind of the main things really on that. Um, other things to think about um, and talk to you better about is post-surgery antibiotics. So any surgery in a rat, particularly because if it's on the underside um, or around the anus, um, has a fair chance of getting infected. I will say I've had very few post-surgery infections, but they do happen um, because the rats kind of drag along the floor and you can get muck and such in it. Partly why keeping them in a nice clean um, hospital cage is good, keep, keep chained in the substrate like every day or two. Um, but actually, to be fair, after the first three or four days, they're pretty well sealed um, and you, you're fairly safe from that. So it's worth in that keeping them on um, a kind of antibiotic for, I would say, around about five days that gives them a good kind of spell and that's not to kind of treat an infection they shouldn't have an infection in them that is there to kind of just give them a, a kind of general system level of antibiotics which helps defend them from any illnesses um, post-surgery painkillers then that's very important um, one of the number one reasons why rats chew their wounds is because it hurts um, so you make sure that you, you've got something like typically metacam is normally given or Meloxicon was another brand name for it um, and, and that just keeps them kind of topped up, not too painful. Um, if a rat is side sucking, so pulling its kind of flanks in really sharply, it's in a lot of pain and then it's worth talking to the vet because unless it's had major abdominal surgery like a spay, um, it's, it shouldn't be in that much a large amount of pain generally speaking um, and it's a sign that maybe something's gone wrong. Um, but if a rat is in a lot of pain and it has had abdominal surgery, that is very painful for them. Um, you can give Metacam um, up to four times a day. It's a bit like human paracetamol, if that makes sense. You have to leave a gap between it, but it's one that you probably want to discuss with your vet as well to make sure you've got an appropriate dose. It's got a big, quite a wide dose range. You can go quite high on that and you can give frequently. They prefer to only give it once a day to start off with. Um, you should be using the minimum amount of painkiller to give the effect that you want, which is no pain. <laughs> Um, so it's kind of balancing that. So um, that's covering quite a lot. Um, 
I would keep, so, sorry, I keep the Metacam up for about three days for a standard up, maybe five plus days for something abdominal, depending how it's healing. I should, should mention that. Um, it's not something that you kind of, with both the antibiotics and the painkiller, that you need to continue long term. It's purely to kind of get them over those few days. Um, not all vets will give um, antibiotics in particular. Usually a vet will give um, painkillers, and if they don't, you need to kind of really push for it um, because they're a bit worried about antibiotic resistance. But for the kind of lifespan we're dealing with rats, it's not the same issue that it would be with dogs, cats, farm animals, etc. Um, so that's probably covering most of it. Um, you know, keep the friends up, keep the company, don't fuss them. When you're thinking about putting them back in the cage, so with things relatively minor up, assuming all's going well, then I will probably think about putting her back in the cage in about four or five days time, probably more like the five days time. Um, for a spay, I tend to like to leave it more towards the back end of a week afterwards. Um, it does depend on the rat and how fast they're healing. But I expect the way this wound looks at the moment, assuming she doesn't have a go at it, she'll probably be back in the cage um, kind of early next week. Um, it's currently Thursday, I think. So kind of she'll have she'll be in here over the weekend. I will take her wrap off after a couple of days. I may even try it tomorrow. Just get her over that initial period because um, our rats tend to react to the initial anaesthetic and that's what makes them choose, makes them go a little bit nuts and then they'll chew themselves and once they're out of the system they're normally okay as long as we keep up decent amount of painkiller and etc to kind of keep them through it um, so bear that one in mind um, I expect Sphinx to do very well um, and there's no reason to think she's not she's got a lovely clean wound um, even if she's very miserable <laughs> at the moment bless her um, because of her wrap um, but it is one it's kind of a short period of being miserable and sad um, to a much faster healing process so it is worth it um, if they chew their own wound they can be in this kind of cage for quite a while and it's very boring for them and whoever poor friend has to sit, stay in there and look after them um, so main things in kind of summary make sure you've got appropriate painkillers from the vets that you've got um, antibiotics if at all possible um, make sure that if if you think your rat needs it you've got you wrap it um, if you aren't sure have the kind of cohesive bandage to hand in case you do need it because the worst thing is if somebody starts having a go at the um, stitches late at night and you don't have anything to do that with um, and one really important thing is give them the peace and quiet to recover don't be fussing them don't be getting out them out a lot checking them as often as you kind of need to make sure that they are safe but that we're talking a few times a day we're not talking about every half an hour or something and we're not talking about manually getting them in and out all the time because they've got a wound that needs to heal and it's much like we don't want them climbing a big cage we don't want to be manhandling them in and out all the time either it's not good for them so give them the peace give them a friend um, they tend to recover a lot better with a friend they also are less likely to chew um, wounds and such with a friend so bear that one in mind and make sure that they're drinking a number one priority and then also kind of like encourage them to eat within restrictions don't allow them free access to food because particularly that first 24 hours because that tends to be when they kind of eat themselves to ridiculous levels um so that's probably the main stuff for me and um things little kind of surgery recovery you can see she's now got a bum to me um she's sulking <laughs> but i'll put a friend in soon and, and pop some food in for them and they'll probably do well tonight and then um, we'll see how they're getting on tomorrow so over from, and out from me and from fink 